How's it going guys? Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Did I hit record? I hit record. Today I'm going to show you how I record my videos. I've had lots of requests. Oh god. Hey guys, Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Today I'm going to show you how I film my videos. I've had lots of requests on people. I've had lots. Hey guys, Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I film my videos. I've had lots of requests asking me how to create videos like this and I'm just going to show you how. I'm not even going to cut anything. We're just going to roll right through it and you'll see everything I do, all the mistakes I make and hopefully you'll learn a thing or two. You're watching Triple B TV. All right, so I've got a GoPro strapped to my head so you guys can follow along and see everything I do. And if you ever want to have a really serious conversation with somebody, just strap a GoPro to your head. Guaranteed, serious conversation. Um, so you're also going to get to see how messy my house is, but whatever. It's a mess. Here's my magical bag. I've got it on wide view, so I hope it's picking up everything here. It should be. It's the widest angle possible on this GoPro, so it's my bag where I keep all my fun stuff. <clears throat> take it on road trips and whatnot, go to see uh, Freedom Breeder and go down to Jake's place and all those other videos. See when I'm on the road, this thing is great because it fits all my stands, all my support equipment. Then in here I got all my cameras and all my lenses. And then right here, got the audio. So audio is very important. I'm sure you can probably hear right now. Somebody is playing with a dust buster downstairs. So that's nice. So I always unplug all my, I really hope the GoPro is picking this up. Um, I unplug all my batteries and stuff so they don't die when they're just sitting there. And this is a Sony UDP wireless lavalier mic system. And I like the way it works. It gets a pretty good sound out of it, which you will hear now. Right now we're just using the sound off the GoPro, which I'm sure is amazing. But this is what I usually use when I'm picking up people speaking. And I put it into this, which is the recorder that records the files, and hopefully I've got a card in there right now, yep. So let's take this thing over to the bathroom so you guys can see me doing stuff as well. Alright, so get this stuff turned on. And I take my little magical mic here, run it down my shirt. So you're not staring at a wire the whole time I'm talking. And it seems no matter how much I wrap this thing to try and avoid tangles when I undo it, there's always at least one knot. Let's run it down my shirt like this. Now a lot of times I like to wear a button-up shirt so I can hide the little clip easier, but sometimes I'm just like, whatever. If you see a little clip, it's not a big deal. But this is how you get some good quality audio and it's not plugged in yet so obviously we're still going with the GoPro audio and as long as I plug this into the right thing we will soon have quality audio just got it plugged into my little transmitter let's clip that in my pocket and we should be getting sound over here now onto the receiver which we are but is not yet plugged into the recorder, so we're still GoPro sound. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a fairly long video, but hopefully it's helpful. So audio into the microphone, down to the transmitter, transmitted wirelessly from the transmitter to the receiver, out of the receiver, into this little handy dandy recorder right here. Tascam. DR40 recorder. I'm turn it on. <clears throat> on GoPro, pick that up. And then I'm gonna hit record. And once I hit it once, there you see we got that little message telling me that it's recording. You see, every time I talk. And I'm gonna double check and make sure that's actually recording. See, sometimes you see this little thing here, external in can also be changed to 
internal mic mono. And internal mic means it uses this little microphone right here. And the problem is sometimes I have it turned on that and I'm, as I'm testing it, I'm sitting here talking right at it. So whether it's come through the mic or whether it's come through here, it's picking it up. And I've done that like at the Pomona show. I was micing everybody up and was using this microphone the whole time. So as I was checking them, I was holding this, talking to them, saying, okay, is it, is it go ahead and say something for me. And they're talking right into this and it's picking it up here. And then I go put this thing down in the backpack and <laughs> it, was, it was a mess. It was a mess. Luckily, I always have backup audio, which I'll show you in just a second. So external in, that means it's recording through this little thing that's picking up this audio as soon as I hit record for the second time. Bam, now we've got good quality audio and I feel good about it. All right, so let's go sit this little bad boy in here, out of sight, out of mind. He'll be recording audio the whole time. Should have a good enough range to pick up wherever I go in the room up here. And I'm going to unplug or at least turn off my fans here so that when they kick on, they won't cause me a bunch of pain and grief and suffering when I go to edit the audio, stuff falling all over the place. There. All right. So next, let me just double check that we're getting good audio. I always double, triple check. Yep. Fantastic. Okay, step number two is going to be to set up all of my stands and equipment. These are all my lights and light stands right here. Not gonna use that today, that's a slider. That's my glide cam that I use for getting those nice gliding shots when I'm walking behind somebody following them, it makes a nice, easy, smooth motions. Not gonna use that today. A Couple of tripods and the light stands, that's all we need out of here today. So, tripod one, tripod two. Guess might as well turn on these cameras now. Bink, GoPro, and also cell phone. So you don't necessarily need all this fancy equipment to record a good video. Like right here, I'm just using my, my cell phone. I used this cell phone to record that whole herping experience with, uh, with Brian Gundy up there in Santa Cruz Mountains. All that was done on my cell phone. So, I like to keep everything in cases and I, <laughs> I feel like it helps keep it new because stuff can get worn out real quick traveling on the road and banging it around. I try to keep everything in little cases or the original boxes, especially like the audio equipment, you know, I just want it to last as long as possible because it's not like it's the cheapest stuff in the world. Hopefully my setup process shouldn't take too long. I've done it a couple times, so I kind of know what I'm doing here. And this is where all the magic happens, right here in my closet. <laughs> I'm not gonna be in my closet forever, but for now, hey, you work with what you're given, right? Or you work with what you got. So, extend out some legs. Sorry guys, I know this part is not necessarily terribly exciting, but you know, it's all part of the process for making a quality video, which is what this video is about. Do, 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 do. Get the tripods kind of lined up to where I know they're going to need to be for the camera. Get a general idea and then we can fine tune it afterwards. So I usually have one pointed right at me across here and then the one here that shoots off to get the other angle. So we've got tripods, let's set up the lights. Now these lights are pretty fantastic. They're LED. The great thing about them is that they're battery charged, meaning I can go out in the field and use them. I don't need to be plugged into a power source. 
these little batteries right here last for a pretty good long while. I was just using this at Freedom Breeder, so hopefully we've got enough power. So we still got three bars of power, so that should be plenty. The other great thing about these lights is you can dial in the Kelvin, which is the temperature of the light. So you can make the light really warm. I wonder if that's picking up over here. Let's still take it to the mirror. So 3200 Kelvin, really warm. We can take it all the way over to 5600, which is nice and blue. Now the GoPro is probably using auto white balance to change that to look white. So maybe I should do this once I got the actual DSLR set up. But anyway, Photo Deox, pretty cool lights. And lighting is key to any video, any picture. It's all about lighting. If you want things to look good, depends on how they're lit. Like look at this shot right here. I mean, this is, this is my example of horrible lighting. I got like a little bright spot here on my nose. All this stuff coming across here. I got this ugly shadow highlighting how I'm getting older here. <laughs> so good lighting is key for a good video. If you couldn't do anything else, even if I was just using my cell phone all the time, the lighting would be key to making it look good. So I use these little translucent umbrellas. And I won't pop not just yet. This is a new development. This is my AC unit that I'm using to cool off the room because summertime is approaching. So the room will get to points where it's going to try and get too hot and I'd like the room ambient to stay under 80 degrees. So this thing will kick on anytime it gets above 80 in here. And it wasn't here last time I filmed, so <laughs> I guess we'll see if it gets in the way or not. Get it all strapped in there. That's about a good height because I'm going to be sitting down, so this is a pretty good height. It's going to be pointing kind of right at where I'm sitting. I don't want it too high because I'll get all these underneath shadows, which I don't really want. All right, stand number two. And you can see here, I'm not working with a whole lot of space. I basically got to shove these things way into the corner there. And you'll see how fun that is when I'm dancing around it later. Umbrella number two. And I left the lights out there. So we'll definitely be doing a lot of back and forth here because I'm just winging it. And this will give you actual realistic view. Oh, sorry about the sniffles. And back again. I need to have my little tripod deals. So I twist these bad boys into the bottom of the light so that they will stay attached to the light stand. And this is easily going to be the most exciting part of the video. Ready? See how exciting this is? Slide that in there, tighten it on, and then we'll turn them on later to save on battery as much as possible. And now I'm starting to sweat, which is right on cue. This is right about the time I start to sweat every time I'm filming in this room because it is warm and I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. So usually that means I have a cool down period between setting up and actually filming so I'm not dripping sweat through the entire episode. But today we're not gonna do that. This is camera one. Camera one, I always hook up with the 24 to 105 millimeter. So I can get a nice wide shot or I can zoom in if I want, but I do always set it to 35 millimeters when I'm filming in the room. And then for the side angle, I use my 50 millimeter prime, which is a killer, killer lens. It's not very versatile as far as the focal range, obviously, but Man, it is a good looking, good looking lens. Backup audio. 
I attach this to the top of my, of camera one. So just in case something happens with my lavalier mic here and the audio goes out, or if I make a big mistake, like I did at Pomona, I've still got at least some decent audio to work with. And you can't control everything in the world, but if you can have backup audio, it'll save you a lot of heartache for any mistakes you might make or any kind of malfunctions you might encounter. So, set up the first camera. Just kind of get it on there, get it kind of positioned where I think it'll be good. Come back here behind the clothes. This is what I do every single time. Taking off the lens cap is always a good idea. And hopefully you can see this. Set it to 35 millimeters. That's what I find works for this room. I set the white balance to 45 because I'm gonna set the lights to 45 as well so I get a nice white light. If you guys don't know anything about that, it's not a big deal. Get a general focus. And right about there, I think is usually good. I'm sitting right there, so I want to kind of point me in the middle. That'll work-ish. I should just move it over here. There we go. You can turn on a little info button. Make sure everything's nice and level. Got this little automatic level right here. I really hope the GoPro's picking this up. That's level enough. It's basically centered on me. Good enough, I think, for now. Set up camera number two. Take off the lens cap. Get it dialed right in. Put the lens cap somewhere where I will find them later or not. So camera number two, generally, I think right about here is where I usually point it, and it usually works out pretty well. So we'll dial that in, lock it up, and hopefully we're good. But I always double check, turn on this mic before I forget about it, and then what I'll do is I'll put up my umbrellas, get these lights on. 7 to 4,500, and I found that right about 50% or so is, is fine for this room. Do the same thing over here. And do a little less on this side, 4,500. Open up the umbrella, diffuse the, night, the nice light evenly. I don't think I'd change the white balance on this camera. That's already 4,500, perfect. And then I'll do a test. I'll do a, turn these cameras both on, get them recording, grab my tape measure. I will show you why right now. And one thing I almost always forget to do is turn off that damn light right there. And it's always a pain in the ass because it's a different temperature than these things. And it's not the end of the world on the video, but man, I sure notice it. So, if everything goes well, I remember to turn that off. Come sit down on my little perch. I take this little mic, little, little microphone, this little tape measure, go right out from my eye to the focus point on the back of the camera. Yes, I know this is amazing, but this is how I do it because I'm by myself 95% of the time. 46 inches from my eye to the focal point on that camera. So I will dial in my distance here at about four feet or 46 inches. And it should be about the same here. So I'll dial this in as well. Now say that I didn't do that. And I had this camera focused way out here, which has happened. Now I've got to focus for one and a half feet. And I come sit down, I'm talking blah, blah, blah. And I switch to camera two and boom, I'm completely out of focus. And that's why I take this little tape measure and make sure 
that I'm at the right focus distance so we're nice and crispy like we are here. See the sweat? So now I dial this in to where I want it. It's just under four feet. And now it should come off nice and crispy. Even then, it's still a guessing game because especially with this lens, it's got a very shallow depth of field. So it doesn't always work the way I want it to. But hopefully it is right now. And shoot guys, that's about it. That's set up. Then I do my little thing. I sit here going, uh, blah, 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 blah. Thanks for watching Triple B TV. And that's about it. I do my spiel. Sometimes I'll have a snake with me. Maybe I should pull out a snake. I haven't seen a single snake this episode. Hey, baby. This here's my stingless bee. And she lesser spider, also known as Sophie. And she hopefully has some follicles building in there. She recently paired to uh, my Enchi Het Sunset boy. So hopefully she's starting to build. That would be awesome. She did lock up with him, so that would be cool. Well, guys, uh, hi up there. That's about it. Then after I do all the recording, turn everything off, go plug the cards into the camera, into the camera. Go plug the cards into the computer and go to town on Final Cut Pro. Now I'm not gonna go over all my Final Cut, Final Cut Pro editing stuff. That would be something I would cut out so I don't sound like a complete moron on camera. But for this video, like I said, none of this has been cut. I've just been switching around to the different camera angles. Everything I've said, there's obviously no cutting because I'm messing up left and right. That's part of my process in Final Cut Pro usually. I'll go in, cut out things that make me sound like an idiot and keep in the things that make me sound like an absolute genius. At least to, to me, in my opinion. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. And please don't hesitate with any questions. I will not hesitate to answer them. And the Final Cut Pro thing, you know, I, I learned most of that stuff on my own. I've, I've never been trained in video, whatever, whatsoever. Um, I took a couple of photography classes at University of Hawaii, a couple of community outreach reach programs, you know, pretty basic. And everything else I just kind of learned on my own. There's already a ton of resources out there for using Final Cut Pro online. You can find tutorials and this and that. It's real easy to learn on your own. So I'm not going to go into the depth of how I cut together all the shots and add the music because it's fairly simple once you, get to, uh, once you learn to use it. It's quite user friendly. So that's it guys. I think we're done here. I'll see you next week. I don't know what I'm doing yet, but I think maybe I'll leave all these cameras set up. I'll definitely leave these two cameras set up and we'll work on next week's episode. All right? All right, guys. Talk to you later.